Uh, two men come to church. They come to the temple to pray. Two people, two accounts. Pharisee was self-righteous. He trusted himself. He, he trusted in himself and trusted in what he had did. And the publican, he was honest before God. He came as a child. Now the Pharisee, uh, he left church with nothing. That's how he left the temple that day. He left with nothing. Maybe he felt uh, uh, lifted up in himself, but that's all he had. And it ran out. But the old uh, uh, publican there, he, he was honest before God, and guess what he did? He truly worshiped God. He was honest before God, and he truly worshiped God. Good to be back, and uh, I was talking with Brother Zane a moment ago, and he tells me the Lord's laid on his heart. This is the final night of revival tonight. So, uh, so with that thought in mind, I was thinking today about uh, about Isaiah chapter six. It just come across my mind. Uh, in that scripture, you know Isaiah, he is uh, he's called the Lord. He walks into the temple. And he's got everything on his mind. He's got uh, it says in the year. That King Uzziah died. I also saw. I saw also the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and His train filled the temple. That idea that in the year that King Uzziah died, you know, in his mind that was like the end of the world. That king had been in place forever and ever. He's worried about his friends. I'm sure he's worried about his loved ones. I'm sure he was worried about uh, his country and all these different things. I know all of these things were on our mind as we started this revival, but. When you go on down through there, when he goes on into the temple, and he comes in and he sees the Lord high and lifted up within the temple, you know what? It didn't matter if it was the year that King Uzziah died. It didn't matter about what this one was doing or what that one was doing or how this one was acting or how this one needed to take care of this. You know what he thought about? Woe is me. I'm a man of unclean lips cried out to God. You see, when you come to the temple, or you come to church in this sense, and, and you really have a meeting with God, first thing's going to get right is you, right? Amen. So I pray as we've been going through this revival this week, that you have gotten close to God. Amen. That you have cried out, Woe is me! Woe is me! The spotlight isn't on anybody else but me and me alone. I know it has been on me. I tell you, that's, that's where revival starts, is with us, with me, me. Amen. Let's go to the Lord in prayer tonight. Lord God, we come before your throne as Isaiah did, Lord. Lord, we don't have the vision to see the things that are going on here tonight, God, but we know that you are in control, that you are here in our presence, God, that you are with the congregation here tonight. And God, I pray that your Holy Spirit will, will be upon this people, God. Be upon me, Lord. Woe is me, for I'm a man of unclean lips. I'm a man of unclean thoughts, unclean ideas, God. Forgive me my sin. Lord Jesus Christ, be merciful to me, a sinner. And God, help me to draw closer to you each day. God, I just want to be like you. Like a son wants to be like his daddy. I want to be like you, Lord. I want to follow in the ways that you are, Lord. Kindness, mercy, humbleness, love, absolute submission to the Father. God, help us all to, to try our best to be who you want us to be. We know we cannot do it, but you can do it through us. Lord, help us put aside our thoughts that, that we're going to keep these things. God, give us the strength to live in the joy of your salvation. Amen. Let us live knowing that we're doing it because we love you and you alone. I pray for any soul here tonight, Lord, that hasn't seen you high and lifted up yet. Amen. That hasn't let that vision change you here tonight. God, I pray that it will. I pray if there's any soul here tonight that doesn't know you as Savior and Lord, I pray that they'll come, that they'll receive you as that here tonight, God. That they'll begin the journey 
of being sanctified into your blessed image, God. And I pray also, Lord, though, for this church. And I thank you, Lord, for what you're doing here, God. I thank you for how you're touching and you're moving among this congregation, Lord. Lord, I thank you for all that you are doing. Yeah. There's nothing I can do, nothing Brother Zane can do, nothing any of us can do. But God, if, we, if you're in the works, yeah. it's going to happen. See. It's going to happen. So I pray tonight, Lord, you just, just continue to be with my Brother Zane here. Help us to hear the message that you've laid upon his heart. Let us have ears that are attentive to hear. But Lord, also give us feet that are attentive to move if they need to move. Give us hands that are attentive to, to go out and do the things that we've heard about this week. Let us, Lord, just come closer to you. Ah, oh, what a place to be. And be close to you. We ask these things in Jesus' blessed name. Amen. 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 You know, uh, I hope you've really enjoyed revival this week. I know I have. <laughs> I've been very blessed. I, I, the messages have been um, special to me. They have. They really have. And so, without further ado, I'm going to ask my good friend here, Brother Zane. I know you all have got to know him, and I pray you love him just as much as I do. So, come on up, Brother Zane. Like I say, it's good to be here tonight. Thankful for everyone that's come out tonight. Uh, if you have your Bibles tonight, I'd like for you to turn over to Luke. Luke chapter uh, 18. And as you turn there tonight, I'd like to show you something. I know Scott's done read this, but uh, <coughs> it's a bulletin. I got one of these Sunday morning. and I guess if I'd looked at it, I was supposed to know that Revival was supposed to end last night, but the, the Lord wouldn't let me leave last night. And I hope you understand that. If you don't, pray for me. I, that's what I ask of you tonight, to pray for me. I want you to see something in your bulletin tonight. Number one, it says, pray for our church, Pastor Scott and his family. Number two, pray for Roy, Brother Roy and Ned, and also for Gary, for the care he provides them. Also remember Larry in prayer. And then if you jump over to the top of the next page, it says pray for our nation and its leadership. Boy, do we ever need that. Pray for our bus ministry. Invite someone to church. Pray for those in our church family who are sick and unable to attend services. Also pray for Randy Beats and his family. Be much in prayer for the revival, beginning tonight with Brother Zane Stewart. Now don't get scared, it's not beginning tonight. <laughs> But then jump down to the bottom there. Matters for prayer. Pray for one another. Man, how we need that church. Pray for one another. And pray for our church. Now if you don't have nobody to pray for, you've heard me preach. And you, you know I need your prayers. Remember all those in church who are sick and are unable to attend services. Over where I live, I've never seen, and I don't know, it may be this way here. Never seen so many people with cancer. I mean, it's just, it's like it's rampant. So many people that have cancer. So it says, also remember the unsaved family members and friends. Remember each other. Continue to pray for our military. My nephew's graduating from boot camp tomorrow at Great Lakes. Uh, his mom and dad and sisters are up there tonight. He's graduating in the morning from boot camp at Great Lakes for the Navy. And I think he has to ship to Pensacola. So remember my nephew. His name's Alex Overhope. So if you could remember him, uh, he's uh, in the military. He just graduated high school, and I never dreamed this kid would go to uh, the military. He loves sports. He loved basketball. But I will tell you, tell you this, uh, he's been saved. He's been born again. Been getting a lot of letters from Alex, and uh, he loves to go to church. Uh, he loves to go to their services, and he said some of them are just, uh, they stand up and read off a piece of paper is all they do. But every now and then he'll say, man, we must have had a Baptist today because he got excited, you know. <laughs> and he said it was so good to be in the Lord's house. And it's just so good to see him grow in the Lord. And uh, it, it's a blessing. Young people, please, 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 just go ahead and give your life to the Lord. Let him have it. You'll never, ever go wrong in service for the Lord. Now, I won't stand here tonight and tell you it'll always be easy because it won't always be easy. But I'm going to tell you what. He said he'd never leave you nor forsake you. He'd go with you always even unto the end. 
And I believe when the end comes, there he's going to be. Welcome home. You know, I've heard a lot of people say this, church, and I may be guilty of it myself. I've heard a lot of people say, when I get there, I'm going to do this, or I'm going to do that. Well, I'll just be honest with you. I, <laughs> when I get there, I want to thank him. I want to thank him for what he's done for me. He's been good to me. He's been so good to me. I can't tell you how good the Lord's been to me. I know a man that right now he's in a nursing home, and I was down there today. He got saved when he was 66 years old. This man run a beer joint for years. I mean, he run a beer joint. And me and his son are best friends. And his son got saved. And, and I remember the night the daddy got saved. I was in the service. We was in a little church over in Pirates. And my wife and this man's son and another girl, they had a little quartet. They sung together. And they sung without any music. If anybody tried to play music with them, it messed them up. But their voice is just like, it, it just blended so well. I, I never seen anything like it. But I remember he asked his son to sing that song, uh, Go Rest High on the Mountain, and he sung it. And I remember I was about the second bench back, and I remember I, the, the night before we were having revival at Dutch Bottoms, and I watched the man hold on to the back of the bench, and his knuckles sort of turned blue, and he held on so tight. And I told him in the parking lot that night, I said, if you just let go and take that first step, I said, God will take the rest of them for you. I said, he's there. And the next night, we were in that little church, and it's a revival meeting, and I seen that man walk the aisle. And he told me, he said, you know, I got saved back there, but he said, I want to make sure I come up here. And, uh, but he's, I've heard him say this in a lot of services. No longer he's able to go. His mind is not what it used to be. But I heard him say this over and over. If I lived to be a thousand years old, I could never ever thank him. He said, I could live, I could be in hell right now. I'm 66 years old. God saw fit to save me. Ain't you glad God's in the saving business? Amen. Ain't you glad it don't depend on who I know or what I know? or It don't depend on how much money I got. It depends on what Jesus Christ did in Calvary and his death, burial, and resurrection. Ain't you glad that it's so simple that even I can understand it? If I can understand it, then anybody can understand it. But it says, encourage our young people. Show them you love them and invite someone to church. Invite someone to church. I know over where I pastor at, we were out sort of in the boondocks, I call it. There was a man come over and visit us one time from Florida. And he said, man, this place is really in the boondocks. I said, you ain't even started yet to the boondocks. I can take you to the boondocks now. <laughs> but one more thing on this bulletin. I, I, uh, it, it's part of my message tonight on the very first. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Amen. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Now, Brother Scott's done been all over my message tonight. He talked about the temple tonight. Now, the temple and we're talking about tonight would be like coming to church is what it would be like in our, our time today. But I want to show you something tonight the Lord showed me, and I pray it'll be a help to you tonight. I pray that uh, uh, what I've preached this, way is, this week's been a help to you. I pray it'll help you grow. That's my prayer. I'm not here to make a name for myself or, or nobody. I'm just here to lift up the name of Jesus. That's the only reason I come this way. Scott asked me a good while ago, and I told him we need to pray about it, and then he called me, and we said a date, and here we are. And we're here for a reason tonight, and it's not by mistake. We're here. The devil told me last night, and I didn't sleep hardly any last night, wrestled with him all night. He told me, he said, you should have quit last night, but I couldn't. just would not let me. I hope you understand that. I hope you truly do understand that. You see, I'm going to stand before God one day, and I'm going to give an account what I did or did not do. And you know on that day, church, ain't nobody going to be able to point the finger and say, well, it's his fault. The finger's going to be pointing at me. And I don't want to stand, as the Bible says, uh, 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 talking about the watchman on the wall, I don't want to stand and nobody's blood dripping off my hands. As the Bible plainly tells me this, if I do not warn you, if I just sit back and say, well, it's okay, and I do not warn you, then I'm going to be the one to pay the price. But if I warn you and tell you what's to come, 
and you don't hate the cow, then that's between you and God. That's not between me and you. So tonight we're going to read some, probably some very familiar scripture to you tonight. Found in Luke chapter 18. We want to start in verse 9. And we do desire your prayers tonight as we stand before you. Luke chapter 18 and verse 9. It says, And he spake this parable unto certain which trusted in who? In themselves, for they were righteous and despised others. Now, you can't be righteous and despise others. I'm sorry, that just not will work. That will not work. It does not go together. Amen. But look at verse 10. It says, Two men went up into the temple to pray, the one a Pharisee and the other a publican. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself, God, I thank thee that I am not as other men are, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this publican. I fast twice in the week. I give tithes of all that I possess. And the publican standing afar off would not lift up as much as his eyes unto heaven, but smote upon his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For everyone that exalteth himself shall be abased, and he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. Now tonight, I want to share this with you tonight. Two men pray. Now you say, preacher, we've, you, about everything you've preached about this week has been had prayer in it. Well, church prayers are one of the most underused things that the church has. Prayers are one of the most underused things that we have. We have a, a, a description here tonight that two men pray. Let me read this to you again. It says, And he spake this parable unto certain which trusted in themselves that they were righteous and despised others. Two men went up into the temple to pray, the one a Pharisee. Now, you must understand about the Pharisees who they were. They did not go to the temple to pray to God, but to announce to all within earshot how good that they, he was. The tax collector was recognizing his sin and begging for mercy. Self-righteousness is dangerous. It leads to pride, causes a person to despise others, and prevents him or her from learning anything from God. The tax collector's prayer should be our prayer because we all need God's mercy every day. And we don't need to let pride in our achievements cut us off from God. And if we're not careful, pride can get in our way sometimes. But it says that the two men went up to the temple to pray. The one a Pharisee, no doubt he was a, a very religious man. He may have uh, dotted all the I's and crossed all the T's, every jot and tittle. He may have done it all. But he, uh, uh, he was very religious. Well, uh, people do a lot of things religious, but uh, I'd rather be saved tonight. I'd rather be born again tonight. Uh, people talk about Christian, and we use the word Christian very loosely sometimes. Uh, uh, to be a Christian is to be Christ-like. Uh, and there's times in my life that I've not been Christ-like. Uh, and I'm sure there's times in your life that you've not been Christ-like. Uh, I'd rather say I'm saved tonight. I'm born again tonight. Uh, it's nothing I've done. Uh, I can't go back on my, uh, my family tree or on the lineage that I come from. Uh, I can't go back on that. Uh, I had to do it personal. It's a personal thing. Uh, and if you're born again tonight, uh, uh, then it's between between you and God. It's a personal relationship uh, uh, that you have with God. Uh, uh, but this old Pharisee here, uh, uh, he was uh, uh, no doubt a very religious man. Uh, and you know the Pharisees, uh, uh, there was the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Uh, uh, they's always sad too. Uh, uh, but the Pharisees, uh, uh, they wanted to keep the law. Uh, I'm glad to tell you tonight I'm no longer under the law. Uh, I'm under the grace plan tonight. Uh, I've been saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. Uh, I'm so thankful thankful tonight uh, uh, that Jesus was willing to go uh, all the way up to Calvary. Uh, he didn't go part of the way, Scott, and say, well, uh, I don't think they're worth it. Uh, he didn't go three quarters of the way uh, and, uh, uh, and, and say, I don't think they're worth it. Uh, uh, but he went all the way to Calvary uh, and he uh, stretched out his hands there. Uh, I remember what he said in his word. Uh, uh, no man taketh my life, but I lay it down. Uh, uh, why did he lay it down? Because he loved me and you. Uh, he loved all of humanity that much. 
Uh, that's how much he loved the world. Uh, uh, but he went all the way to Calvary. Uh, he hung there between two thieves. Uh, he was our mediator uh, uh, from God to man. Uh, he come to this whole earth. Uh, uh, just think where Jesus come from. Uh, he stepped down out of heaven where he was at. Uh, if you don't think he wasn't, go back to Genesis uh, and see what it says in Genesis. Uh, he said, let us, let us. Uh, uh, so there was somebody there with him. Uh, uh, so tonight, uh, I want you to think about this tonight. Uh, uh, now think about religion tonight. Uh, uh, think about this old Pharisee. Uh, and sometimes we all uh, uh, may get a little religious at some times. Uh, I've heard people say this and I, I really don't care for this saying. Uh, uh, well, they got religion. Uh, I hope they got more than religion, church. Uh, I hope they got salvation. I hope they know Jesus Christ and the free pardon of sin. Uh, I used to hear that a lot when I was growing up as a boy. Uh, I heard them say, well, uh, uh, they got religion. Uh, I noticed in our place at home, uh, uh, there's a lot of people of the Baptist faith. Uh, oh, you better have more than Baptist faith. Uh, now, I'm going to tell you tonight, uh, I believe in the Baptist way. Uh, I believe it's the closest way. Uh, and you say, why do you think that, preacher? Uh, uh, well, I've read it out and I've studied it, uh, and I believe it's the closest way. Uh, uh, but I know this tonight, church. Uh, uh, being a Baptist won't get me to heaven. Uh, uh, being a church member won't get me to heaven. Uh, uh, Brother Scott could take me and dunk me and never hold around here uh, and baptize me over and over again, uh, but that won't get me there. Uh, uh, there's only one way. Uh, it's by and through Jesus Christ. Uh, uh, Jesus Christ said, I am the way. Uh, I am the truth. Uh, I am the life. And nobody can come to the Father house but by me. Uh, so we see the old Pharisee here. Uh, he was very religious. Uh, he had all these things going for him. Uh, uh, no doubt uh, uh, people probably had to step out of his way uh, as he walked down the street there. Uh, uh, now I want you to turn over if you will uh, uh, just for a minute tonight. Uh, uh, bear with me tonight. Uh, 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 Scott's boy said, Dad, look how early we got out last night. Uh, uh, so we'll try to fix that tonight. Uh, uh, but, but just bear with me just for a little bit tonight. Uh, uh, turn over over to Isaiah chapter 64 if you will uh, and I want you to look at one verse with me tonight uh, uh, look at verse 6 uh, uh, but now uh, I want you to think about verse 5 uh, uh, look at uh, uh, verse 4 look at verse 4 but you uh, uh, focus on verse 6 uh, it says for since the beginning of the world uh, uh, men have not heard nor perceived by the ear uh, uh, neither hath the eye seen O God besides thee what he hath prepared for him uh, uh, that waiteth for him uh, uh, now I don't know about you, uh, uh, but I'm going to have a, uh, a glorious home one day in heaven. Uh, they talk about mansions down here. Uh, uh, they don't know what a mansion is. Uh, uh, Jesus is preparing a mansion for us tonight. Uh, uh, I'm telling you what, we've got a lot to be excited about. Uh, uh, now look at verse 5. Uh, uh, thou meetest him that rejoiceth and worketh righteousness. Uh, uh, those that remember thee in thy ways, uh, uh, behold thou art wroth. Uh, uh, for we have sinned and, and those is its countenance. Uh, and we shall be saved. Uh, but I want you to get verse 6 tonight. Uh, uh, now I want you to think about the old Pharisee. Uh, he went up there to the temple to pray uh, and everybody in the earshot heard him. Uh, I thought about it in our Sunday school class here Sunday uh, uh, where the Pharisees used to take the money uh, and they throwed it in the box so they'd make a racket. Uh, and that old widow she gave her mouth. That's all that she had. Uh, uh, but Jesus noticed that more than the Pharisees and all the racket that they were making. Uh, it's not how much we've got. It's how much we trust God with what we've got, church. How much we let Him have of what we got. I'm going to tell you what. I like God's plan better than the world's plan. I don't know about you tonight. I'd rather be on God's plan tonight than the world's plan. But the old righteous man there, he was self-righteous in himself. He told him all that he done. He tied, he fast twice a week and all that. But look at verse 6. But we are all as a... But we we are all as an unclean thing and all our righteousness every one of us tonight we could get up here and we could proclaim what good we've done and we could stack all that up everywhere that we could stack it and you know what it is? It's just no filthy rags. It ain't no good for nothing. That's all it is. It's just no pile of filthy rags. But I'm glad to tell you tonight there's a better way. His name is Jesus Christ. I'm so glad tonight that he loves me, ain't you? Uh, but look at verse 6. Uh, uh, but we are all as an unclean thing, uh, and all our righteousness are as filthy rags, uh, and we all do fade as a leaf, uh, and our iniquities like the wind have taken us away. Uh, 
Uh, now, while you're turning back, uh, uh, go over to Romans now, uh, uh, Romans chapter 3. Uh, and I want you to see this tonight uh, in Romans chapter 3. Uh, now, remember we had two men prayed here. Uh, uh, there was two people went up to the temple there. Uh, uh, we have two accounts of their prayers here. Uh, uh, the Pharisee, he, uh, the Pharisee, he was self-righteous. Uh, uh, the Bible tells us uh, uh, that he trusted in himself. Uh, uh, now, look at Romans chapter 3 and verse 9. Uh, and I want you to get the... Uh, get this tonight, church. I, I want you to uh, take this home with you tonight. I, I want you to think about it uh, uh, this weekend uh, uh, before you come back to church Sunday morning. Uh, it says in verse 9, uh, uh, What then? Are we better than they? Uh, I'm not no better than nobody. I don't want to feel no better than nobody. I was always raised up. You ain't no better than nobody. I heard this a lot growing up. You got to learn to crawl before you walk, boy. But I tell you what, I don't want to be no better than nobody. You know that person you see that's got tattoos on them and maybe they got piercings everywhere and you'd like to turn and look away? I guess what they've got? They've got a soul that needs Jesus Christ. They're lost just like you was lost one. Time. Uh, if you're saved tonight, uh, uh, you've been uh, you you were lost at one time in your life. Uh, uh, we're all lost. Uh, we're all sinners saved by God's grace tonight. Is what we are. Just bear with me for a minute here. Uh, uh, what then are we better than they? No and no wise. Uh, uh, for we have before proved both Jews and Gentiles. Uh, uh, what's the Bible say it is there? That they are all under what? Yeah. S I N sin. That they're all under sin. As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. Uh, there is none that understandeth. There is none that seeketh after God. Uh, they are all gone out of the way. Uh, they are together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good. Uh, it says, uh, uh, no, not one. There is none that doeth good. Uh, uh, you know what the Bible says? When uh, good is present, what else is always present? Uh, evil's always lurking around some horse. Uh, uh, do you realize this tonight, church? Uh, uh, the devil's lurking around here some horse tonight. Uh, he wants to get in this church. Uh, he wants to bust it up. Uh, he wants to do all his work here. Uh, I've seen churches get into it over some of the craziest things. Uh, and I'm like, how in the world did that happen? You know how it happened? Uh, uh, the devil found a crack and you know what he did? Uh, he got his way in there. Uh, uh, just like the old religious man here. Uh, he was self-righteous. Uh, uh, well, I'm better than they are. We're not better than nobody. If it was not for the blood of Jesus, we'd all be on our way to hell tonight. We need to remember that. If it was not for the blood of Jesus Christ, I, I, we'd all be on our, hell, on our way to hell tonight. But I'm glad to tell you tonight, I've been born again. Amen. I've been born again. Now I'd like to stand up here and boast tonight and tell you what good things I've done. There ain't nothing good I've done. It's all... <laughs> Woo! Thank you, Lord. It's all what he done. Yes. Amen. Praise his holy name. It's what he done. So we see that we're all, uh, con conclusion here, what I just read you, conclusion. We're all guilty before God. Every one of us is guilty. It says for uh, Romans 3 and 23, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Romans 6 and 23 says this, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Proverbs 11 and 4 says this, riches profit not in the day of wrath, but righteousness delivereth from death. Well, I'm glad it delivers from death, ain't you? Amen. Boy, I'm so thankful tonight. Now, if you will, turn back to Isaiah. Turn over to Isaiah chapter 1. Isaiah chapter 1. We're trying to get there tonight, church. Isaiah chapter 1. You pray for us. The harder you pray, the quicker I get done. Isaiah chapter 1. I want you to see one verse here in Isaiah chapter 1. Now remember the religious man, the Pharisee. He's self-righteous. He trusted in himself. Now remember the old tax collector, the publican there. He was honest before God. You know what he did? Scott read the scripture the other night. He came as a child. He came as a child. He couldn't even lift up his eyes unto heaven. He smote himself on the breast there. God be merciful to me a sinner. Boy, I tell you what, church. We ought to be so thankful tonight. God's merciful to sinners. And you know what, church? God's still saving sinners today. 
We don't hear much about it anymore, but God's still saving around this world. God's arm's not too short that it cannot follow. It cannot reach. It reached right down where you was at, did it not? Yes. It come and got you one morning or night or whenever it got you. It's called Holy Ghost Conviction. We don't hear that talked about much anymore. It seems like it's hush, hush, hush. Don't talk about that. But let me tell you what Holy Ghost Conviction will do. I, I, it'll get people to uh, thinking about things. It'll get them looking at things different. And it'll get them to, i tell you what, I, I was working one time at, uh, at this hat, man's house. We was putting in a big old wall. And we had a back hole. And we was digging out. And this old boy was helping us, me and another boy. And this old boy, he talked foul and talked foul. But I'm going to tell you what, time we got done with that wall, he said, this has had an effect on me. I don't cuss like I used to. It wasn't us, it was God that had the faith. We just lived right in front of him, or we tried to. That's what we tried to do. What do we need to do in the world? We need to try to live front, right in front of him. We don't need to be like the Pharisee. We don't need to be self-righteous in front of people. But we need to, uh, to just let our light so shine before men that they could see a, a change in us the, so that they could see a difference in us. Uh, Isaiah chapter 1 and verse 18. Look at what the Word of God says. Come now and let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be like what? Like wool. Now a deep stain is virtually impossible to remove from clothing, and the stain of sin seems equally permanent. But God can remove this stain of sin from our lives as He promised to do for the Israelites. We don't have to go through life permanently soiled. If we are willing and obedient, God's Word assures us that Christ will forgive and remove our most indelible stains. He will remove that sin from you, whatever it is. Now, uh, two men come to church. They come to the temple to pray. Two people, two accounts. Pharisee was self-righteous. He trusted himself. He, he trusted in himself and trusted in what he had did. And the publican, he was honest before God. He came as a child. Now the Pharisee, uh, he left church with nothing. That's how he left the temple that day. He left with nothing. Maybe he felt uh, uh, lifted up in himself, but that's all he had. And it ran out. But the old uh, uh, publican there, he, he was honest before God, and guess what he did? He truly worshipped God. He was honest before God and he truly worshiped God. Now I've got two questions for you and I'm just about done. You really are? Yeah, I really am. You gonna go back to Newport and leave us alone? Yeah, but I'll be praying for you. I'll be lifting you up in prayer. Two men come to pray. Two accounts, two people. One was self-righteous. You ever been guilty of being self-righteous? I'm sure we've all been guilty of it sometime in our lives of looking down our self-righteous nose at others. Church, let me tell you what my wife told me this a long time ago. She said, honey, you can catch more flies with honey than you can vinegar. You know what some of the world needs, Scott? They need this right here. They need somebody to come alongside them and say, let me tell you about Jesus. Let me tell you what he's done for me. And let me tell you what. What he's done for me, he'll do likewise for you. Why? Because he has no respect for person, does he? No respect for person. We need to go and put our arm around him. Now, I don't know how it is in this county, but I know where I'm coming from. Man, drugs are rampant over there. It's amazing how many children that have been buried in the last 10 years. It's amazing, folks. I had a lady one day ask the store, getting some gas, going to work one morning. She told me this. She said, you need to pray for such and such family. And this man was a preacher, a good godly man. His boy, uh, oh Lord. If you've got kids here tonight, you ought to get up and hug them right now. I'm telling you what, church, you better hug them and hold on to them. But this woman said, you need to pray for, your, pray for this family. She said, there was somebody OD and they had their funeral down at the funeral home. And she said, my girl and another girl went down there and said they squalled and boo-hooed and carried on. And then they went out the car and shot up and got high. Man, that's sad, church, but it's going on all over our land. All over our land. It ought to break our hearts. It ought to break our hearts what's going on around us. 
in our communities, how that the devil has took it over. And it's time for God's people to stand up and say, enough is enough, we're taking it back. Why? Because we have the power and authority, do we not? According to the Word of God, we do. But sometimes we want to uh, back up and say, oh, no, no, preacher, no. So the Pharisee religious, he left church with nothing. The publican honest before God, he truly worshiped God. Now, we've been in revival since Sunday morning. The thing said Sunday night. Maybe I come too early. I don't know. Maybe I stay too late. I don't know. But I preach to you what God gave me. My, my conscience is clear now. If I had not come back tonight, I just don't know. That I, I, I probably had to just show up one Sunday night and say, hey, I've got to preach. But I, I'll give you what God's given me. But we've been going since Sunday morning. That's Sunday, Monday, Sunday morning, Sunday night, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. What's today? Thursday? Thursday. But here's my question to you. How do you come to church? How do you come to church? What did I read you a while ago? Psalms 122 and 1. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. I was glad. You know, church, we're not the majority now. We are the minority. Do you realize that? We're not the majority now. We're the minority. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. First question, how do you come to church? Second question, how do you leave church? How do you leave church? You notice how quiet it is. Do you know what that is? Do you know? Listen, that's the Holy Spirit. It's woo. It's woo. Ain't it amazing? Just think you could believe in anything. But Jesus Christ, as I've already stated this week, somebody loved you enough, they prayed for you. They may have brought you to church. You may not have had no way to church. They brought you to church. Somebody thought enough of you to bring you to church that you could sit under the Word of God and the Holy Ghost could get a hold of you you're saved today, sealed on the day of redemption. So how do you come to church? You come in like this. Boy, if you just know how tired I was, preacher. I've been on the back, on my hand on the mattock all day. Let me tell you what tired is. And I hadn't done that in a while. Woo. You didn't do it in fun. And I'm not complaining. I'm blessed. But church... Seems like we've always <clears throat> we've always got time for what we want. But we sometimes don't have time for what God needs. The devil's got people so busy in our world today, they just don't have time for God anymore. Don't have time for God, don't have time for prayer, don't have time for church. And you know, if you miss one Sunday, it bothers you. If you miss another one, and the longer you go, the less it bothers you. So how do you come to church? How do you leave church? Do you leave saying, oh, you should have been there. You should have been there. That's Scott, I'm telling you, he's the best preacher I've ever heard. Now that guy he got to come for revival, I don't know so well about him. He slobbers a lot. But now Scott, He's a fine preacher. Both men went home justified in some sense. The Pharisee wrapped in the same self-justification he had worn to the temple. The tax collector wrapped, wrapped in the righteousness of Jesus. In other words, he was a sinner saved by God's grace. Now, if you will, turn to Psalms 100. Psalms 100. <coughs> I 
Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Some people say, I can't sing. I can't neither, but I'll try. You know why I'll try? For a lot of years, I didn't do anything for the Lord. I was a church member, and I did this right here. I sat on my bench. I didn't bother anybody. I come to church and went home. For a lot of years, my, my church attendance was very sporadic. But then my children were born, and I wanted to make sure my kids grew up in church. So my wife, she always went. I didn't go with her a lot. Shame on me is all I can say. Shame on me. But I sat on my bench. I didn't bother anybody. So one week, uh, the youth of the church, they didn't have a Sunday school teacher. They came to me, and they asked me if I would be their Sunday school teacher, and I told them no. I said, I can't get up in front of people and talk. And I said, no, I'll not do it. Well, they kept coming back. They kept coming back. We need you to be our Sunday school teacher. So I went in there. And I've got it put up somewhere at home. I never, I never stood before nobody. And my wife had me make a lesson so I wouldn't be babbling and going everywhere to sort of keep me in check, you know. But I never done anything, church. And I'm ashamed to tell you that tonight. But it's the truth. But the Lord really started to deal with me about calling me in to, to preach. And boy, when he really started dealing with me, I'm like, you want me? Me? You've heard how I talk. And I, I, I remember, I finally, this went on for a good while. And I remember Scott, I told my wife, and you know what she said? You? That's what she said. You? I said, yeah, honey, that's me. She said, well, I always thought I was supposed to be a preacher's wife. I always <laughs> felt that. And I didn't tell nobody, church. I promise you, I told nobody. I didn't tell nobody. I, I carried it with me for a long time. And I worked in Sevierville, Mount Mold and Dyes, tool and dye maker. And there was a, they hired a guy down there. His name's David Hodges. He's a pastor now over in Sevier County. Maple Grove, I believe where he's at now. And they hired David to run this old key meal. I had to set the thing up. It's always oh, aggravating. It's from Sweden. It's the most aggravating thing. You had to adjust all these cams. You had to keep it within a half thousands. And it's just aggravating. But me and David worked side by side for about a year. We were at, you ever met somebody, well, Scott's that way to me. You ever met somebody and you felt like you know them your whole life? Well, that's the way me and David was. We worked side to side for a year. And I remember one Monday morning, I went to work. It was, it was after Thanksgiving because we'd had a long weekend. And David was there and we called him CD, Cousin Dave. I said, how are you doing this morning, CD? He said, I'm doing good. He said, I did something last night I was supposed to. I said, what'd you do, CD? He said, I know it's my call to preach. And folks, I promise you, it come out of my mouth. I couldn't stop it. I said, that's what I need to do. So I announced my call at work on a Monday morning in November. I went to church that Wednesday night at, at Dutch Bottoms. This is how the service always went. They'd have a few songs, altar prayer, and they'd say, has anybody got anything got to say? That Wednesday night, I said, right back about yonder. I stood up and I said, I have. And I went up and I told them. Now, before all this, my pastor, we'd had youth, we'd had youth Sunday. And we had a lot of youth then. Me and my wife worked with them. And I told the Lord, and I know the Lord's not into making deals, guys. I told the Lord, I said, Lord, if I'm supposed to preach, I said, then you'll let me talk to my pastor. Well, church was over, and we had refreshments in the fellowship hall for the kids. Church was over, and we went out in the fellowship hall, and my wife's aunt and uncle, they've gone on to be with the Lord. They were the janitors there for 30 plus years. And me and my wife and her aunt and uncle were, the, were in the fellowship hall. Now, this is how God works. And I got up and I shut the, we shut the door. We was locking the door to go home. And I'm like, 
looking for me. And my pastor's neck, it come around that building, it looked that long. And I hit that man with everything I had. And I wanted him to feel sorry for me. You know what he told me? You got two choices, son. Two choices. Do it or die. He said, that's only two choices you got. He said, if it's been bothering you this long, he said, I've had them run up and say, I've been called to preach, and you can't find them in six months. He said, God didn't call him to preach. He said, but if it's been eating at you that long, he said, you've got two choices, do it or die. And I stand before you tonight, church, and I honestly believe this in my heart. You may say, man, he really is warped out. Where did he come from? Oh, cop County, okay. But I really do believe this. If I had not surrendered to the call of God, I may not be here tonight. Or I may be somewhere crippled or something. And I, I just, the boy just come through my mind just then. I know that this has happened to you. It's serious, guys. It's serious. That Wednesday night, I got up and I told him what had been eating at me. My pastor said, be ready Sunday night. Now you talk about your knees. <laughs> <laughs> knocking together. I preached 13 minutes. My uncle came and he sat back there and he timed me. He said, Jesus and 12 disciples, that's just right. 13 minutes. And said, so, well, what's happened to you now? You can't shut up. That's what my wife says. said, used to, you couldn't get him to say nothing. Now I can't get him to hush. <laughs> so I'm going to try to end right here. <coughs> Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Now look at verse 4. Now every time when I'm at church, now me and Scott learned this in school. That's not a proper, a proper word learned. But do you know why the Baptists keep the pulpit in the center? Rightly dividing the word. Rightly dividing the truth. If you're looking at others, it's over board. It's over to the sides of board. The Baptist is in the center. To rightly divide the word of God. That's why it's in the center. But, look at, but when I look out at church, I look back and I see back here doors. And I look at them doors and I think that's gates right there. We come in here to worship and we exit to serve. We come in here to get filled up, and we should go out there and empty out. When we come back in, we should be ready to get filled up again. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth, and we're still talking about it tonight. This is what's amazing. His truth endureth to all generations. You know what his word's going to do if the Lord leaves us here? It's going to keep going. They'll never, ever stop it. How many has tried? They've died. His word's still going. We've talked about Jonah this week and all Daniel and all kinds of things. We're still talking about it. It endures to all generations. So when it was time to come to the house of the Lord, was you glad? I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. I'll be honest with you, coming back tonight, I thought, man, I may have messed up. They may take me out back and beat me up, and I'm here by myself. <laughs> but I'm glad I come. Amen. I'm so glad I came tonight. It's just been so sweet to be here this week. Like I said, if you have nothing to pray for, you've heard me preach. Pray for me, and I'll be praying for you. I pastor a church. We don't have a whole lot of people. God has blessed you. If I, if I had time tonight to tell you what God has done where I pastor at, you'd say, there ain't no way. Come with me and I can show you. I can show you what God has done at that little church. I'm telling you what, it's amazing the things I have seen happen. And I guess I was just young enough to, to believe God. You know, God, God has showed me this. If he has summers for us to go, we don't know, need to worry about what we're going to say when we get there. Why? He said he'll fill us when we get there. We just need to trust him. Now, that's not giving you an excuse not to study because the Bible says study show thyself approved. A workman rightly dividing the word of truth. 
But two men pray. Two accounts. One was self-righteous. The other was honest before God. Have you been honest before God this week? Have you been honest before God? I've tried my best to be where God would have me to be. And, and don't please don't lift me up. Lift up Jesus. I, 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 I've told people this. I don't even like to be called reverend. I just mm, call me the brother. Give the reverence to the one that deserves it. He does. Give it to God. Give him the reverence. Call me your brother. I've always told people this. Don't ever put me on a pedestal. You know what happens when you get on a pedestal? You've got to come down. you got to come down. Hey, I know I ain't the best, and I don't claim to be the best, but I'm a work in progress. <laughs> Woo! I'm a work in progress. <laughs> you know, I, I sung this song going home the other night, and, and it's a kid's song. He's still working on me. He's still working on me. That's about all I can remember, but you ever been in the car with me? <laughs> Church, I love you. I do. I, I, I hope you, 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 you believe that tonight. I, I can't make you believe that, but I hope the Spirit speaks that to you tonight. Thank you for allowing me to be here. And I, and I am going to get down to quit. Two men pray. One was self-righteous. The other one was honest before God. Have you been honest this week? Is it where it needs to be between you and God? And I, I'll leave it there. Thank you, Lord. I'm going to tell you something. There's times when I was at Omega, we'd come up and I'd teach the kids downstairs in Sunday school. And I'd teach a lesson, it wasn't necessarily in the book or anything else. And me and that pastor, we wouldn't talk to one another. We had no idea what we came to speak about. But it would match. Amen. And I tell you, when Brother Zane got up and he began speaking, I just felt a chill run up me. <laughs> tell you the Lord ain't working <laughs> among his people. Praise I mean, <laughs> don't tell me that he isn't moving among Amen. his people, folks. Because yes. we didn't talk about anything no. before I come in here tonight. No. That's just the Lord, folks. Amen. That's him. We've had an altar call each night. We're going to have another one here tonight. I asked Sister Sherry to come up here. Brother Rick, would you get us a song? As they come, I want you to think about what's went on here this week. What's went on here this week? God has done some mighty things here this week in ways that people can't even see. He's done mighty things here this week. Things that will go on and move on past maybe some of us. But do you want to be a part of it? Have you just sat back like Brother Zane was saying? Each night I just sat in my pew and I sat and I just listened. I just, you know, heard what was going on. But I never got involved. Tonight's the night to get involved. Our religion isn't a, a theater production where somebody comes and gives you something and you can take it up and you pay the bill and you leave. Amen. It's something where you get involved. Yes, bless you. Will you be involved? Will you, will you come here to this altar tonight and pray? Amen. I know each one of you has have something to pray about. Yes, bless you. And the only thing that keeps us in an old seat is our pride. You know, a stand. Those who want to sing, stay in their pew. Those who want to pray, come here tonight and pray. Come, won't you come? We would love for you to come meet us at one of our regular meetings in person. Sunrise is located directly off exit 23 off of Interstate 81 in Tennessee. We regularly meet Sunday mornings at 10 a.m. for small group Bible studies and then at 10.50 a.m. for worship. We also meet Sunday evenings for worship at 6.30 p.m. and Wednesday nights for discipleship training at 6.30 p.m. We would love for your family to meet our family. And again, thank you for watching and sharing with others.